So this is Kendra Savage. She practices holistic and integrative psychotherapy and psychoanalysis. She has a master's degree from Rutgers University. We mentioned at the beginning you do uh, EMDR and you also do mind body work like meditation. What you're saying there is really, I think, moving us to this, the, the meditation part. I think it, that's a really important distinction and witnessing is a big part of a meditative practice. So is, is you do, you do practice meditation in your practice and is witnessing part of the meditation practice as you see it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's something meditative about all the body work that I do and I practice meditation a lot myself. I think just creating that witness, you use the word witness in meditation, the word observing part. So the part of us that can neutrally in a more neutral way, just be present for whatever's happening in our life. And it's kind of an internal resource that we have. Uh, and it allows us to look at what we're going through without judgment. So that's the other part of meditative practice that is, you know, so you need the observer and that observer needs to be without judgment. So that, we can look at anything going on. Um, that, that is so huge. And that is something I do notice as you go through steps of taking people back through the past experiences, and even the part where you're integrating as the, the journey goes uh, afterwards, but uh, particularly uh, when people witness themselves going through traumas, it's completely different to that. That comes back to that distinction between reliving it yeah. and you're not reliving it. And you're not, uh, by witnessing it, you're not identifying with the pain. Yeah. Uh, and, and it creates that, that level of distance that, and by witnessing it, you know, who's witnessing it? Like I felt the pain and I was scared and angry, but the witnessing part does become like a subconscious or, and then we get into a super conscious. You talked That's about, right. you know, the, the, the highest wisdom. So the highest wisdom can transcend, you know, uh, the identity and can be a, a wise part beyond the, the cognitive or the, the the really strictly physical or emotional part. And it can bring in a spiritual wisdom, which is what can start coming through naturally in meditation as well. So does that, is that what do you think? Does that resonate or? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is really a conversation point, I think across disciplines, you know, the idea that there is something beyond our mind that is propelling our evolution and our growth as a species. And the word consciousness, you know, your spiritual wisdom in deep intelligence, whatever you want to call it, you know, energy, you know, physics has its own language for understanding these things. But um, anytime you're, I've worked with clients doing this work, they will begin to tap into that resource. And that really, I think is the, the main goal um, really helping people prepare for this resource, helping them begin to build the skill of how to find it, how to return to it. And then a lot of the body work and meditation I do is helping people continually gain access to that resource. So it gets easier and easier for them to find their way back to it. Yeah. And some other points you mentioned there as well. So we can be witnessing and uh, not identifying with the pain, but we can also uh, judge. And also you mentioned being non-judgmental and people can judge, well, I've got little T trauma. My grandparents and my parents, you know, if you're a, a Zuma or whatever they're called, the, the, the Z, the younger generation, uh, they, you know, they can get some flack for being like overly sensitive. Uh, but they also do mention, and then going through the ringer because of that. And I think, and, but that does remind me of like the hierarchy of needs. And so we can talk about the third world or our previous generations where they are really concerned about you know, populating and creating civilization and spreading civilization and, uh, and looking after the hierarchy of needs, having safety, having a secure food source, and they're having some form of abundance, which they got, and then they're happy with that. But now we've got all of that. There's a point where we get to the top of the tree and it's more towards self-actualization. Yeah. And so then more subtle things can still create the same level of, uh, of trauma or pain or suffering. And you did mention them going through the ringer. And so despite the fact that, you know, on, on some levels, the lower part of the hierarchy, things are taken care of. Uh, it, it's not, that doesn't, uh, and people may try and trivialize uh, the, the upper part of it, but it is all part of self-actualization, which is part of a conscious awakening and a healing process. So, it may seem more subtle, but it still does require healing. It's still valid. It can't be really trivialized. And the ultimate purpose of it is, is for this conscious awakening. Oh, yes. And I would say it's 
I mean, for those who may not have gone through that, I feel like the hierarchy starts all over again. <laughs> it doesn't actually okay. even feel like it's smaller. It just feels okay. like another triangle, you know, to me, the, the internal self-actualization process is its own frontier. It is its own huge process with which people are going through. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in having personal sessions or certification training in hypnosis or hypnotherapy or regression to this life, past lives, between lives or spirit releasement therapy, then visit my website, thepastlifeawakeninginstitute.com for details.